last topic of this chapter. It's certainly been a long drive to get here. Once we start getting to the problems, there's I think 17 that we do, you'll find that it's not as challenging as what the lectures make it out to be, but gives you a good foundation to do those exercises. So, the sales mix. Up to now, we've been dealing with a single product firm. Well, what if they're not single product? A sales mix tells us the proportion in which a company's products are sold. And once we know the proportion in which they're sold, well, that changes break-even analysis because every product will sell for a different price with different variable costs and offer a different contribution margin. So you can't just come up with one level of break-even in sales and one level of break-even in units and say, there we go, that's the break-even. If the sales mix changes, that changes everything. So, in a single product firm, our break-even, we know, is our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin ratio. In a multi-product firm, the break-even point depends on the title, depends on the sales mix. And everything is easier with an example. So let's do an example. Let's take a, a company that has two products, product one and product two. And we'll, for each of them, we will look at the dollar amount and the percent amount. Get used to working with dollars and percents, by the way, because from here on in, that's what we do, dollars and percents. In fact, the percent is probably easier to work with than the dollar amount because it's a purer number. Sales. Product one sold 20,000. And we'll call that 100%. Product two sold 80,000. Call that 100%, which means we sold $100,000 in total. 20,000 of product one, 80,000 of product two, we got 100,000 in total. Less our variable costs. Our variable costs for product one were 15,000. That is 75% variable expense ratio. That's pretty expensive. Our variable costs for product two were 40,000, which only gives us a 50% variable expense ratio. 15 plus 40 is 55,000 in total for the organization, so the organization as a whole has a 55% variable expense ratio. And our contribution margin from product A is $5,000. That gives us a 25% contribution margin, contribution margin ratio, sorry. Product two is 40,000. The contribution margin ratio here is 50%. 100,000 minus 55 here is 45,000, which leaves the overall organization with a 45% contribution margin ratio. Take off our fixed costs. Notice our fixed costs only come off the total of the firm, not off of each product. That gives us $18,000 in operating profit at the organizational level. So let's do a break-even analysis of this firm. It's a multi-product firm. How does that work? Well, one slight change to the break-even formula. Our break-even point is still our fixed cost, but it's divided by our overall contribution margin ratio. For a single product firm, it's just divided by the contribution margin ratio. Here it's divided by the overall ratio, and that is 0.45. Even though product 1 is 0.25 and product 2 is 0.5, we end up with 0.45 overall, so our break-even in sales is $60,000. Our sales mix, our current sales mix for product one and product two, remember now, we need 60000 at the total level, so how much do we need on each product? Well, our mix currently as a percentage of the total, as a percentage of total sales, product one makes up 20% of sales. 20,000 of 100,000, product one makes up 20% of sales. Product two makes up 80% of sales. So our sales at break even at the firm level is $60,000. Made up of 20% of that will come from product one because that's the mix. 20% from product one, so we need $12,000 from product one. And 80% of it will come from product two, which is $48,000. So we need $60,000 for break-even. Break-even happens when product one sells $12,000 and product two sells $48,000. Let's have a look at what that means in units. 
and let's say that product 1 is currently selling 800 units and product 2 is currently selling 3200 units. So we need a price. If product 1 is selling 800 units, how much are they selling for? The price is our sales 20,000 divided by $800 is 25 bucks. Because remember, we're doing a contribution margin per unit now. So per unit, we need the price and the variable cost per unit. Here we have sales of 80,000 divided by units of 3,200 will give us the same 25 bucks. Nice, they both sell for 25 bucks. So our contribution margin per unit is our selling price, 25 bucks. And we'll take a shortcut. We multiply it by our contribution margin uh, 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 ratio we'll get six dollars and twenty five cents here we have twenty five bucks but fifty percent of that is a contribution margin ratio so we'll get twelve dollars and fifty cents contribution margin per unit now all we have to do is just weight them by the sales mix six point two five twenty percent plus twelve fifty at eighty percent and we just solve and we'll end up with eleven dollars and 25 cents. So our fixed cost, our overall fixed cost divided by our overall contribution margin per unit, which we just figured out, is 27,000 divided by $11.25 gives us 2,400 units. Well, that 2,400 units, 20% of that will be product one. 80% will be product two. We just do the math. This is a long way around. I don't like this way. You got to know how to do it. You really should have the flexibility of saying, look, I got the power to go in any direction I want. But once we have the break even point in dollars and we figure out product one and product two, we simply just divide by the selling price and we'll have our units. Now that we're done, let's look at some assumptions. Uh, the, some of the assumptions that we've covered uh, of cost, volume, profit, and break-even analysis. A lot of stuff happened in this chapter, but it does have some limitations. So in taking this to the real world, you have to understand that Chapter 4 had some simplicities. Number one, in all examples we did, the selling price was constant throughout the relevant range. Well, in the real world, companies have prices that, that may fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis, especially for a lot of exporting-based companies who price their product in U.S. dollars may have a constant U.S. dollar, but the Canadian exchange rate changes every day, so your product changes on a daily, almost a minute-by-minute -minute basis if you bring it back to your home currency. We also assume that costs were linear throughout the relevant range and that the cost can be divided between variable cost and fixed costs. Even if we have a mixed cost and we use the most advanced technique of regression analysis to try to separate them, we'll never get precise. And there are some costs where it's difficult to figure out if it is fixed or if it is variable because it may act under certain conditions it may act variable and under other conditions it may act fixed depending on our level of volume. So remember what we mean by costs are linear. We, we're assuming that our variable costs look like this and that our fixed costs look like this. Well, we may have step variable costs and step fixed costs. That messes things up. Number three, if we're talking about a multi-product firm, the analysis of break-even assumes that the mix, the sales mix, stays constant. So in the example we gave, we gave 20% from product 1, 80% from product 2. Well, what if next month it's 2278? Well, your break-even changes. What if the month after that it's 19% product 1, 81% product 2? Well, your break-even changes. So unless you plan to tell a customer, sorry, I can't sell you product A until we sell two more product Bs, to keep the sales mix constant, your sales mix is never going to be 20, 80 every single month. It's always going to change. If your mix changes from high contribution margin units to low contribution margin units, your break-even point will go up. Your firm has become more risky. Your margin of safety has shrunk. Look at all the terminology I'm bringing in from this chapter, right? 
If, on the other hand, you sell fewer of the low contribution margin units and you sell more of the high contribution margin units, your firm has become less risky. Your break-even point drops. Your margin of safety increases. So it matters what your mix is. And listen, in the real world, your mix will never be the same even from day to day. So some of these assumptions are just for the simplicity of doing the chapter. Understand that when you bring these in the real world, they'll tend to fall apart quite quickly. If we're talking about a manufacturing firm, and I know we haven't gotten there yet, one of the assumptions of break-even analysis is that inventories are constant so that your inventory values do not change from period to period. In other words, you sell what you produce. You inventory nothing of it. So production equals sales. We haven't talked about this, but here's your warning. It is coming up. And when we reach it, we'll talk about it. (music) 